All right, so welcome to the spoiler section. Uh, we'll try to hit uh, some some major ones uh, right up the front. Um, what the fuck with Snoke, man? You 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 fucked it up. We don't find you done out. fucked it up. I I was I wanted to say that in the review. I should have put that in the review. You done fucked it up, Snoke. You done fucked it up, Disney. What was the fucking point of Snoke? Just to be there and sit uh, in a fucking chair. Everyone loves Andy Serkis, so it gives him something to do. Nobody knows that's Andy Serkis except for us and people that really pay attention. This guy was worse than Darth Vader. He was worse than the Emperor. He's dead. Snoke is dead. Okay, they killed Snoke in this. They cut him in half. They cut him in half. Kylo Ren. He didn't really do anything cool. He, what the fuck? Was he a Sith? Yes, probably. No, he was not. Maybe. Well, we'll never know. We don't, yeah. Was he from the Outer Rim? How I don't know. How old was he? <laughs> How old was he? <laughs> or was he dressed like Hugh Hefner? Who was... Exactly. You'll never know. Who was... It? What the fuck? It's as if somebody said, you know, I don't like Snoke. They just like Ryan, Ryan Johnson came in, Snoke, you're fired. So, you know, in, in the climax, which is a really badass scene, okay... Uh, when Ray and um, Kylo get on the Supreme Leadership, they're in his sort of throne room, which is possibly, quite possibly, the most poorly designed throne room. Oh, yeah. The most That's simplistic, cool. poorly designed throne room I've Fimble. ever seen. I, and I, and surprisingly I, I thought there was going to be a reason for it or something, but there, there's none. The set design was really poor in this one section. And it, he's got a magnifying glass so he could see out of his room. I thought that was a special device. I thought it was some kind of conductive device or something. No, it's a magnifying glass <laughs> out the fucking window. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a cool telescope. Cars. Okay, anyways. So this guy is so overconfident. He seems powerful. Because several times Ray gets upset and she tries to take her lightsaber back. He takes her lightsaber away. She tries to take it back. He whips it around and slams it into the back of her head. Why? I thought that was impressive. Yeah, but that's impressive. But like, he was trying to be funny with it. Why? Why? No, not but you, funny. You think if you're He's like taunting her. He's like, I am so much more powerful you than you in the ways of the Force. Why we don't know? How we don't know? <laughs> For what reason? But he can't sense the things next to him know. spinning. And we'll never know and, now. And and. Exactly. And then he does a little bit of force lightning. Is that what I saw? It was yeah. this yeah, weird yeah. force lightning. Yeah. He, he, we don't know nothing down. about his fucking ring. So all the Star Wars theory channels, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's ugly because you feel the corporation and you feel Disney and you feel just like... Where was the lore masters on all of this stuff? His dolls there's, aren't there, there's no, there's no fucking black kyber crystal ring it's that like, doesn't this play. This guy's not gonna sell enough toys. There's no artifacts. There's no nothing like that. He doesn't know shit. Even his his mentioned training for Kylo Ren isn't jack shit. It doesn't seem like he's trained him. His train to complete his training, kill kill Ray. That's the completed training. I was hoping to see montages of fucking dark side shit or, you know, just yeah, some cool something. fucking shit of Kylo becoming this badass. But, okay, they went a different direction and I was intrigued where Kylo and Rey have this connection where they can connect across, ga across a galaxy. I mean, he's literally there. I mean, waves are on his, you know, the water from the ocean is on him or maybe that's just his sweat because he was... We're working so hard in the Jedi. Water, yeah. I thought they tried to say it was water. Mm -hmm. So they can be in the same place at the same time across galaxies. So they have this connection. And I don't think either of them are doing it. It's the force itself that wants them to be together. So that, so that opens up a whole can of worms. Uh, but eventually they get in the same throne room and they work together. Uh, you know, Well, the connection was a trick. Snoke did that. Oh, that's what he, that he was. Said, yeah, he said he, he was connected. So he was the one that yeah, did all that he shit. He tricked him. Like, <laughs> to, he's like, oh, he might be good or bad. So you're telling you me. convince me, like, if she shows up and he wanted her to come over here so he could kill her. So he that's why. He sat in his fucking chair and just brought 
So that's why, so I dismissed that point because how then did he let a fucking lightsaber, Kylo Ren, behind his back, use his two fingers to move the lightsaber and, and then engage it? Uh, so, so, so Ray's lightsaber, well, Luke's like, well, Ray's Ray lightsaber for now. It, he engages it, kills Snoke, rips the lightsaber through Snoke's body, fall, falls in two like Darth Maul, <laughs> and, uh, and then well, they start fighting, the they start fighting his guards, which his guards were badass. I mean, in, in, in terms of design, of they're just good fighters, and that was good. Why but... didn't they use, like, force push yeah, or I anything know. else? So those guys are not Sith. No, they're why, not why didn't they Jedi. Actually, why didn't Rey and Kylo use force push or anything yeah, else? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they're just like, okay, oh, no. But I'm still on this, Joe. The reason why I didn't think it was is it was actually Snoke manipulating them and putting them in the same that space works. because that's so powerful and he has to have near omnipotence about that stuff. He can't even notice when the lightsaber is moving towards him. That makes no you, fucking he's sense. He's too excited. He's, he's like, oh, too God. excited, he's right? Kill All right, me. fine. I'm so his own so gold then vest. you think that Kylo ran and I was like, oh, this is fucking badass. A little bit of slow mo as they're taking on, but not too much. Um, and, and left you wanting, but then, of course, Kylo has to pull the fucking bullshit, you know, villain stuff, where he's like, he's now the supreme leader, and he's like, join me, Rey, and, it, you know, sort of like the, you know, Darth Vader joined me, but, you know, obviously, Rey rejects this, and, uh, you know... Um, then he gives her you the have a thing. big problem. You're in the middle of a throne room in this massive ship, so how do they get out of this situation? Something that made you angry. Oh, well, first you thing, have the you have the biggest ship of all time. This is bigger than a super star destroyer. Yeah. How is the resistance going to re deal with this? Oh, well, you, we've skipped over the next the very next reveal oh. is where we realize that Ray is just, you know, a oh, random baby. Fuck. He's like, oh, you know, your parents, you've known all this time. You, your, your, your parents are junkies. They sold you for beer money. So we get the second big thing we want to talk about, Ray's lineage. So there's been theories all over the internet. Mm -hmm. There's been, uh, she's Luke, she's uh, Hans, she's Obi-Wan, she's the Emperor's, she's uh, Snoke's, a uh, lot of interesting stuff. She's a child of the Force, which is what I was hoping for, which technically she could still be in this situation, but her real parents are just junkers. Yep. Awesome. And then they have. Great. So he says to be. But she. But she no, says he's Joe. like you know it in your heart, and then you she's know, just like they're yeah. just junkers. Wishful they sold thinking, her off right? for some money, left her on the fucking planet. Those people are never coming back, like Maz says. But it's like so they're in a so You gotta keep hope alive. Yeah. You gotta keep hope alive. All right. Well, <laughs> fine. And basically, this is just the force looking to balance itself because Kylo has darkness in him. The force decided that they need another half. And an, a, a light side, uh, and so here comes Ray. And why isn't Luke factoring into this? Well, because Luke cut himself off from the Force. He was refusing to use his Force power, so I guess the Force uh, put even more power into uh, Kylo and Ray. And this explains why they're so powerful, and why, with barely any training, they're better than any of the Jedi's we've ever seen. I guess, but yet Leia's over here using Force powers. Uh, what? So this is the, the the third thing that we're going. What? What the fuck? And they're, they're so so in those trailers there was no trickery. Okay, he was there to shoot and kill Leia he on didn't the bridge. Push the button, I know. Okay. Uh, so you're right. There was a little trickery. They yeah. try to make it seem like he was pushing it, but I knew he wasn't going to do it. So he takes his finger off the trigger, and his two fighter escorts do it, and the bridge blows up. The greatest loss, Admiral Akbar. Off screen, off screen. Go. I didn't get to see him go I out. Know. But it was he was just meant no, and off screen. He was on there somewhere, but the explosion filled it up so fast I couldn't fucking see Admiral Akbar go out. So my boy it. Admiral Akbar. I like, it's a truck. It's a truck. <laughs> uh, no, but Leia gets jettisoned from the fucking home two, I'll call it ship, because it's a larger cruiser. It's like their last remaining and cruiser. Freezes. And freezes. And literally she's dead. She literally dies. There's no way you're breathing. So she dies, but yet 
she's able to to uh, hand wave her fingers a little bit and then and then Superman she did. flies back into the bridge uh knocks on the heats door. her body up <laughs> knocks on the yeah, door she, she just gets she, she does in. casually puts her hand on the door and we're like okay well what the fuck cuz i was like okay so that's how they killed leia and i was ready to accept it i was like ah Leia's dead. okay i i see and it's a it's a sacrifice, and she was leading the last ships, the last remaining ships of the resistance. But they bring her back. But she was in space, so they get, she had sucked out. Okay, they opened the door. She has no training. Why why aren't those guys sucked out? Or maybe Luke did train her. Once they opened the door to let her back in. Oh, uh, because the, the shields, shield the stabilizers. Shields, duh. Have you ever watched Star Trek? I but but uh, on the okay, so that's that. There's a lot of things on that. Okay, so we're just gonna bitch about the movie yeah. now because here it comes. Because I just realized oh, something. The? the shields in this movie. The shields are completely oh, inconsistent. So at the opening, you have Poe Dameron taking on a dreadnought single-handedly, which is fucking ridiculous, but it's the Star Wars universe, and Poe's a badass. He's too close. We counted his kills close. last yeah. movie. It was like 9, 10, Ten in, in one row. sequence. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to buy that he would charge a, a dreadnought on his own. The excuse is, and where I can suspend my disbelief, is he uses his engines to close that distance where the turbo lasers would normally shoot his fucking ship down. So now he's got the distance closed, it's and it's fast. very hard to hit his ship at that speed. So I'm like, okay. And he's on there shooting up the guns and taking down the deck guns, and they're like, watch the fucking fighters, you know? And and so then 50 fighters come out, and but before that, I was like, wait a minute. This is a dreadnought. No. Where the fuck are the shields? He didn't attack the... He there's no so shields. Much money on the dreadnought. They, they, didn't, the they didn't put shields on it? No. So you're telling me Star Destroyers have shields and Super Star Destroyers have shields yes. and everything has shields yes. except for the dreadnoughts. Yes. Okay, first order dreadnoughts. This is, oh. is going to be the next ship, okay? Yeah. So the, yes. yeah, Just in the shape of Darth Vader's head, the yes. new Death Star. So, so, so they're forgetting their own lore sometimes and the way things work and and Joe's like, well, maybe he's too close for the shields. I was but, like, it's never how do you get how do you get too close? Then? It's like never. No, but with the, with the jets, <laughs> he jettisoned it within the correct oh, range. But yeah. it's not worked like that before. It's never worked like that before. So so you have you, to. You, yes. So my suspension of disbelief there with the shields is broken, and then uh, and then so Leia flies out and then flies back in. And I guess it was kind of cool where it's like, oh, yeah, we get confirmation that Leia has powers of her own. But then that raises so many more questions. How many other powers does she have? How many other powers does she have? Where did she learn how to do this? Did she die and then come back? Or was she not dead yet and she and she saved herself? And it wasn't a slow, like, she reaches out and if she had just, like, struggled at it and then the Force helped her, she just, like, she just, like, opened her eyes and she's like, I can fly. It was almost, yeah, and so, I don't know, fuck, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, Dreadnought still doesn't have shields, and any if you go to light speed through it, you blow it up and everything around it up too. That that was real nice too. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> so yeah, there's some things in the film that that really blow wa things wide open. Uh, one thing we definitely got to talk about is the Jedi Order stuff. So. Uh, we have a scene where Yoda comes back, and that's I was waiting. That's the cameo of somebody. Oh, the cameo, yeah. Yoda's cameo. Oh. I didn't know that's the one you were talking about. It was it me, or did Yoda look kind of weird? He looked he like weird. just like the puppet. What well, no? Not he looked like CGI puppet. to me, though. It, do they not have those CGI models laying around just ready to reuse? Yeah. Because he looked awful, uh, or weird, or off, like his cheeks were too bubbly or something. And I thought maybe at first the reason why it was like this is because they were using CGI, but yet it was mimicking the actions of a puppet. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was completely a puppet and the glowing made it look weird oh, or man. something. I don't know. But basically, you know, Luke it, it doesn't really want to train Rey, and I, I like that. I like the conflict there. He didn't want to train her. But he realizes it kind of needs to train her. And then he gives her three lessons. And it's just super disappointing. And Yoda can summon lightning after being dead? Yeah. What was that about? So then, so then Yoda, Luke, man. you know, Ray's like, fuck this. You're not going to teach me. She fucking flies off. Uh, where you're not going to teach me, you know, more. So, you know, you're not the hope. Our hope is Kylo Ren. I'm going to go talk to Kylo Ren and have him train me or something, I guess. It's a uh, trap. And so Luke goes to burn the Jedi Order books and trees and the last lore of the Jedi. And, and Yoda appears and he's like, hey, Luke, <laughs> you're a funny guy. 
I, I miss you, Luke. I'll burn it for you. <laughs> he was so we see at the very end of the movie that she has stolen all the the Jedi books. She did. Yeah, in, in the in the Millennium Falcon, when Finn's doing something in a drawer, you see all of the oh, Jedi yeah, books. Shit, yeah. I didn't so see that. So yeah. maybe Yoda blew up the the place so Luke didn't realize that all the <laughs> Jedi books were gone. <laughs> right. But I don't. Know. Okay. God, there's just so much that doesn't really hold up to further inspection. You know, as we're talking about it, I'm starting to realize a more lot of the things. More more and more problems with the film. So I don't think this is one of those films that's really gonna hold up to you know scrutiny. You know how people are rougher on films after it comes out. I think this is one that people are gonna be rough on. Um, yeah, think about so it. Alex Let's, and I were yeah. actually talking. What did uh, Luke train uh, Ray in? Nothing. While she was there. She learned what, what did nothing she do? from him. Right. Besides lift those rocks. And what, he didn't to have to a connection that. with the hole in the ground. That's what. Yeah, the, the evil, the evil kelp hole. Didn't really get any... There was nothing there. It was all gobbledygook. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and 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 did you notice how she was pretty fucking good all of a sudden at swinging the thing when we just finished watching Force Awakens she's where and she's good. not a, a proficient yeah, combat fighter. And all of a sudden she was. So did we miss some actual training as lesson one that Luke gave her? Maybe that's the only explanation. But let, no but but there. further, let's talk about some of the the grander themes in the film that I was thinking about. What are some of the themes? Unnecessary here? casino planet was a pretty major theme in this movie. So <laughs> yeah, let, okay, let's start there first. But the greater theme is going to shock you how little it kind of means. But okay, so this casino. Why did we hate this? Because um, all three of us hated this, right? I didn't like it because they needed they needed a code cracker, right? And mm -hmm. so they went through. Why did they need a code cracker? They need a break into the Star Destroyer because this uh, because one of the or was the dreadnought. The yeah, dreadnought yeah, the is dreadnought. it can track through light speed. They could they have a new technology. Yeah. They make it kind of. I, I thought it was going to be a mole, but it wasn't a mole. Yeah. It wasn't a traitor. It it's just been it's a, it would have been better. Yeah. It's a new technology. So now they need to disable that technology. So they need to yeah. go to the uh, supreme leadership and disable something. But in order to go to the ship, they need to crack codes first. Yeah. So they left to go find a code cracker, you know, as if timing... Well, first they interview Maz. Who is oh, in like, the uh, middle of a video game, yeah. firing with jetpacks and shit. Uh -huh. And she's like, I can do it, but I'm busy. So go find this other guy who they can do. Yeah, it's master. You have to go to this planet, and you're going to Side hate. quest! Yeah, and it was... Long side quest, and it could have been just something as simple as they walk down the corridor, and a guy's in the brig, and he's like, "I can break the codes," and yeah. it's Benicio del Toro who did a great job. I thought that Benicio del Toro was like a believable scumbag, interesting, interesting character, yeah, uh, but kind of unnecessary in the end. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, it felt to me a little like the prequels, you know, when there were there's lots of CGI, CGI animals. This was about uh, s sort of slavery and and uh, uh, animal cruelty and the rich and it was trying to make a lot of different political statements at once but it never has the gumption to follow through with them by the end of the movie it's more like uh yeah maybe you're right or you know it's like because he betrays them in the end okay but benicio del toro is a code breaker but he was actually really working for not really working for them, but he'll just get hired out to the, whoever gives him the most money. So they give him a bunch, a bunch of money, and he betrays Finn and Rose in the end, and causes a lot more rebels to be killed uh, as they're catching up with them. Um, so that whole side plot, they were really enamored with this casino and these rich people, and it just felt out of place. It really dragged... The movie came to a complete stop. I guess stop. They, they felt like they needed to keep that in there to kind of have a little chemistry yeah. with Finn and Rose. Okay, yeah, but what's that all about, thing. Joe? So yeah. That's wait, the only you, thing I can think of. And why do they need chemistry? What ends up happening? Apparently Rose met, her for, met him for like 12 <laughs> hours and fell in love. Yeah, yeah. and she he's kisses a hero. Him. Yeah. He's a rebellion so hero. okay, so let's talk about the greater things that I was mentioning before. So in my opinion, what this is about is is about leadership and and being symbols and legends and heroes. And maybe that's not exactly the right thing to do because they made Poe look like a fucking moron. You mm -hmm. know, because Poe is leading people to Just their death. Because going gun ho, he wants to take down a dreadnought, but he wipes out half of his fleet trying to do it. Um, and because he's trying to be a hero. And Finn, at one point, I was getting really scared, guys. Were you? That Finn was going to fucking die? And I was like, I don't want, I don't want Finn to die. Because Finn is driving his little skim uh, to, to shoot a 
laser battering ram uh, to, to slam into it and Rose slams into him to save him and is like, hey, Which is the whole possible. point of not this <laughs> the whole point of this is saving each other, not giving your life kind of thing is what they and then she kisses him. Well, and and saving so, the ones she loves because she, right. she's in love with them. So but this whole symbols and heroes and things, but if at the end of the film they send out a signal to their allies to come help them, and there's they're literally this is the last few. There's like twenty fucking resistance rebel fighters left. You know they've got nothing. They have no ships. No, the skimmers are freaking pick pieces of junk that your your feet breaks through the bottom of them and shit. And they get the signal out, and at the end, nobody answers the signal. Yeah. They don't come. So the galaxy doesn't want the rebels Hope anymore. Is Hope is dead. The resistance is dead. Nobody wants the, the resistance. So the whole theme of the film is kind of, you know, left to... Uh, I mean, I guess they try to wrap it up with this one this scene at the end where the kid has a rebel ring and, and he's got a broom and he was one of the, the slaves at the rich people's place. And he kind of holds his broom like a lightsaber and he's inspired. But what the fuck is that? Do, do, we, have to, do we have to wait 20 generations, 10, gen 10 years for that kid to grow up and start a new room? No, we're going to start enlisting kids. Oh, yeah. That, I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure. When he was Since walking, nobody else answered the call, oh, yeah. we got to get some kids. So anyways, a uh, lot, lot of little little things like that that kind of make you question the movie and question the uh, the you know sort of greater lore behind things. Do they have a lore master? Why did they introduce such a, a an imposing figure like Snoke only to kill him off with no explanation, no questions real and more questions. Yeah, and, no and open up more questions. So um, yeah, not good. Uh, those things were not good. Those were the major standouts of the film. And okay, so let's also talk about the final battle. Uh, that was kind of badass. Uh, Luke shows up and takes on an entire army. In the beginning of the film, he jokes around, what do you want me to do? Walk out and, and, and take on the entire First Order? And that's exactly what he does at the end of the film. They, you know, they've got basically these upgraded AT-AT guerrilla walkers and it's so funny. I love I love Kylo Ren during this whole sequence, especially when when the Millennium Falcon comes and shoots all his fighters, and he's like, "Shout that piece of shit, that piece of garbage from the sky," because he hates it so much and what it represents. And uh, but so that he so here comes Luke to buy them a little bit of time, and he's like, "Every gun we have." Fire and they fire on him and Luke's still alive and I was like, oh wow, what kind yeah. of what kind of force powers did he use yeah. there? And they have this fight and and sort of it's mostly just Luke kind of dodging. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a Ben Kenobi moment. Yeah. Strike me down and I'll grow more power. But he didn't say that. He said something very close really to close it. Really close to it. Yeah. And uh, but then Kylo Ren realizes, oh shit, you know, he's I just cut you in half. But he didn't die. He didn't fall in the clothes. Uh, and then he pokes him with the lightsaber, and it's like a, a hologram. Yeah, he's and so I was like, oh, that's so fucking cool. He laid a hologram down, and he's still in the back with everybody else, getting everybody out. But no, he was actual projecting from a planet, you know, multi, so so far away. And and I was like, okay, cool. I get it. We, we get to... You faked me out. You thought Leia was going to die, but Leia's alive. You thought Luke was going to die. No, he's still alive. But yet, they kill him anyway. Yeah, and not in a great, like, satisfying sort of way. Like, at least it would have been satisfying for him to, like, sacrifice himself. He just kind of dies on a rock yeah, by himself. Yeah, he, so he was astral projecting, and then he looks at the sun, and he realizes something, and he's kind of at peace, and he's happy. And I was like, did, did, did I miss something? Did we see something? Oh, shit, is it is it... Is it is it his father appearing in a nice form, Anakin? Is it is it Han appearing and or what is it? You know, did I miss something? But it, I didn't miss anything. He was just at peace, and then he fades away, and then his clothes fall. Yeah, but Binary Sunset was playing, and there were two oh. two sons. So yeah. instead of Finn sacrificing himself, Luke sacrificed himself. Correct. Yes. That's Correct. Sort of. So we're killing off all the old characters so that the new cast can can take Star Wars and and I guess Disney doesn't have to worry about old farts you know running around dying on them right. <laughs> so they kill fucking they kill Luke but they keep Leia alive. They kill Leia but then they bring her back because she was supposed to have a huge role in in Episode Nine but I guess they're gonna have to deal with that in a different way. Where was Lando? 
Harrison Ford is dead. Lando better get his time in episode nine. He was in two of the original Star Wars films, but I have a feeling that Disney, no, we're not going to put Lando in here. So I hope I'm wrong on that. I hope we do see Lando. Um, so he's not in here. And um, so what? Where does this go now? We, we've got a resistance that is... Without depleted. resources, depleted, no, no allies came coming. to help them. But it, it felt like a happy ending. Like, it's, it's a really bleak situation. There's 20 of them left. They're on one ship. The entire resistance is on one ship. How did this happen? And they're happy. We just blew up Starkiller Base. We just won. What just happened? I guess we didn't really win. That was, we lost in Force Awakens, and we just did a little bit of a poke in your eye. We took yeah. out your Starkiller Base. Because you really did blow up all of our nice planets and our fleets. So, okay, I guess, I guess, okay, so we're even bleaker. We've lost even more. Yeah. Are they going to, and, and I, I, what I hear is that Daisy, Daisy Ridley isn't, doesn't want to play Ray anymore or thinks this is, the ninth film is her last film as Ray. So they got to wrap it up in some Maybe interest. Maybe she read the script and didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. no. or well, it wasn't, it wasn't a malicious, <laughs> she wasn't saying it in like a malicious way. She's just like, well, I don't want to play Ray for the rest of my life or whatever. I don't know what she was saying. But that's what really threw me off because I was like, okay, maybe they're just going to self-contain this and, and the ninth one is going to be the last and then Ray, John, uh, Ryan Wilson's, fuck, whatever his name is, is going to have three new movies in, in a completely different part of the galaxy. Are there going to be Jedi? I, are there going to be Rebels vs. Empire? Is the First Order going to extend over there? I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> this movie opens up too many questions. It has too many plot holes and too many bold choices that go in a widely different direction yeah, from Star Wars. Moments. Too many what the fuck moments. So that's why um, I, I couldn't give it any higher than a 7 out of 10. The things that it gets right, it gets right. You know, um, which is... The action scenes were great. I mean, like the space battles were, yes. were incredible. They, they looked really, really good. Yeah, space battles are great. Got some new types of bombers, dropped some bombs. Chewbacca's um, amazing. Chewbacca's awesome. Porgs, Joe, what do you think of Porgs? They're not as bad as I thought they were going to be. Yeah, but There's they are clearly patience. unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could do without... I mean, just don't put penguins on these islands and the film works just fine. It was put there to sell pork toys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I thought they would at least put a little bit more semblance like this needs to be here because this. No, no. It was there to make Chewbacca uncomfortable when he was going to eat one of them. Right. Because they were all looking at him he real sad. They already cooked it. He killed it and he cooked it and then he couldn't eat it and then they make a home in his Millennium Falcon because I'm going to guess he is but the new I owner can. of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. So he, they're, they made a home in his, his fucking Falcon. He's kicking him. He's <laughs> pushing him off which is my favorite part. <laughs> um, so yeah, you got that. And uh, so anyway, so the rebels are, are fucked or the resistance is fucked because you still have uh, this massive uh, uh, Snoke ship to deal with. How did they deal with the massive Snoke ship? Oh, how did they? Yeah. No, they, they went to light speed. Like they're, they're dying single person man the carrier ship that apparently doesn't have autopilot. They can't yeah, just, so, so they they can't just like, put to... a brick on the accelerator and just let a ship go. They have to make someone go down with the ship. And they're like, screw that, you're killing all the people. But it also destroyed not just his ship, everything else around it. Yeah. Though. It looked like, okay, so here's what happens. In order to buy time for the rebels to escape, this one admiral character shows up and in her... She's from Jurassic Park. Laura Dern, she's, yeah. I, I, I liked her in Jurassic Park. Here, it's it's like, okay, we need some other general be, to show people that, yeah, I thought she was actually uh, the, the one, the mole. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, that's not what it was. It was just, hey, Poe Dameron's kind of being a dick because he wants to be a hero and that's not how you do things. Uh, you just well, run away like a bitch. She communicated better. Run away like little bitches. So exactly, she should have communicated better. Anyway, so so <laughs> she buys them time in her own little uh, fantastic sacrifice and noble sacrifice, so that all the transport ships can go to the planet uh, that you see that that sand planet, and she can lead them away. Only, only that's not what happened. Benicio del Toro fucks everybody over, and and the first order realizes it and starts shooting all the transport ships, and they're like, and she's like, fuck, what do I do now? Well, after fifty transports have been destroyed, she's like, oh well, uh, fuck this, I'm gonna get in it and I'm gonna ram them. 
right? But she's not just going to ram him. She's going to hyper jump into the fucking Snoke ship. How was that not plan A? And that's exactly what he said. And that's exactly what I was thinking in my head. I was like, well, why did you wait that long? Launch the transports, but yet make people believe that it's still a functional ship. Turn around, fucking slam into him. Because it took out so Everything. many. It took out the main ship and I believe like six ships behind it. I was like, wait, did that just happen? I mean, it was a really cool effect and I've always wanted to see what would happen if you would hyper jump into something. So so it didn't bother me, but that's how they took out the Dreadnought because what, are we gonna have a little sequence where they trench run through the fucking Snoke ship? No, so I'm glad they did something different. Well, we established that the Dreadnoughts don't have shields and so it was oh, perfectly no. fine. That that's they... just the Dreadnoughts. This was a... Dread. This super was super dreadnought. Super dreadnought. This was a flagship, basically. <laughs> and no now, now it's fucked up, but I guess they can repair it. And so in episode nine, it's gonna be repaired, and it's only got one wing, and the other wing is kind of attached, <laughs> and so it's flagged like <laughs> Right? Because yeah. the other parts of this, it's so big. Those ships are fully functional parts of it, right? So I don't know what's happening well, in episode after nine. That Phasma's happens, dead. Yes. Oh, we gotta talk about Phasma. We have so a after a lot of people were disappointed with her involvement in the first film, she didn't really get to do much. Did you feel that she uh, they they addressed this in the second film? She felt like a shitty Bond villain, where yeah. it's like, I know that I should kill you with this gun that. 500 of us in this room have, but I'm going to do it real slow yes. with a laser axe. And then I was something. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Just do she it kept, now. She kept putting her guns down and, and going to, to close combat yeah. weapons. Let's use and a spoon. What's her name? Gwendolyn? Um, Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah, she, you know what? She's awesome, man. She's just happy to be in Star Wars. But ultimately, her character was a throwaway character, and they kept trying to give her more to do and give her more justice because females got behind her and was like, "Yeah, we got, we got, we She's got a badass. strong badass character." But unfortunately, that's like not that's not who she was, and and then they kind of revealed themselves as a little bit of fraudulent right yeah. there. She fall like Finn kicks her ass. She falls into the flame. She's dead. They're not gonna pull a Darth Maul with her fucking character if she shows up once again somehow alive. Because she was supposed to be in the trash compactor in the Starbase that blew up. Nobody explained how she got out of that. I think she had like three blood marks on the top of her helmet or something. Or it was a new red design on the top of her helmet. Because she say, got saved from the trash compactor. Fought the trash monster hand to hand. That'll be in she a comic. She had too. You know? She flew through space. Oh yeah, yeah, she flew through space. Everyone hey man, her that. fucking armor was bulletproof yeah, versus the other ones. That's why it was chrome. Got it. You chrome dome. Is what I called her. Uh, so yeah, that was another disappointment. So there are a lot of disappointments yeah, in, in the film. But yet, how is the rating not lower then? It's still we fun. We didn't like a lot of these decisions. But it was still fun. Like yeah. there was not a the, there were some parts that were slow, but I was never real like other than the casino planet. Mm -hmm. I was never bored. And even yeah. the casino planet, I I didn't like it. It was but, entertaining. Yeah. It was engaging. The fact that they were taking risks and doing these things, you can respect that. This is a Star Wars film that really does feel like Star Wars, but yet goes in new directions. And I just, you know, a lot of the directions, I'm like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's the summary of it all. Right? Yeah. Okay. They, they tried too hard. The, uh, well, yeah. Well, they, I would want to say that, but then the Snoke situation makes it feel like they don't know what they're doing. I'm pretty upset yeah. about that. I am really upset about that. I at least that was my more... most exciting thing. I was hoping he'd be Dark Plagueis. I knew he wasn't going to be Dark Plagueis, but I was like, okay, maybe he'll be somebody different and interesting. The Black Kyber Crystal. He'll explain and oh, you know, remember how you thought he was talking? Remember we made that bet? You owe me. Didn't we make a bet or something? That, 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 that he was talking about Ray? No, it was the standard shit. He was talking but about Kylo. He still said she's she's better. No, he didn't. She said that they, no, she, he they, put her in front of him game. so Kylo should kill her. Yeah. So Kylo could kill her and become and he could be finally free of everything. Um and so they couldn't even go and do that right, where Kylo goes good. They couldn't stick with that either. Yeah. Fuck! So now Kylo is the supreme leader. 
That's no, his title is now Supreme Leader. Yeah. And he throws around, uh, you know, General or uh, General Hux, which I like. That was, I was like, that should have been. I, I, mean, I fucking hate that guy. I just wanted and some he's kind of training. Completely montage. miscast. And so I like seeing him get tossed. I around. wanted Rocky style training montages. Either, Either light one. side or Either dark one, side, right? doesn't matter Either what. Light side or dark side, we didn't get we shit. No. We, we got nothing. Rocks. In okay. fact, we got we negative. Rocks. We went negative training montages on both Snoke and Luke's side. So that's why I think there's a little disappointment involved. Anybody could be a Jedi. Yeah. So, and I don't know how much the story was written out ahead of time and how much Rain Johnson, uh, Rain John, what's this guy's name? Rain, yeah, Rain Johnson, right? Rain, I don't know how much Rain Johnson came in and maybe changed the story, but if this is how it's kind of going to do the story for Star Wars, I'm a little, a little worried about the new trilogy he's going to do. But I guess he can do whatever he wants, so so it's fine there. Um, so J.J. Abrams is going to be back to wrap up this story, and honestly, he's got a mess on his hands. I, I, I really do think... He's got a little bit of a mess, and if it's supposed to be wrapped up in a way where Daisy Ridley doesn't have to, you know, play Ray's so many more times, they're gonna have to really kind of wrap it all up. And I wonder Should how they're die? gonna do this. No, you, the only way to wrap it all up is all those actors die, <laughs> so they don't have to play. That's a, the greatest way to balance the force is anyone who's force sensitive is dead. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I'm okay with the this. Cowboy. This leaves a lot of questions. You're okay with him being supreme leader yep. and being the villain of these three films? Might as well do it. Because Snoke wasn't. Let's go all the way. Snoke wasn't the main. I know villain. he wasn't. I thought he was. Huge disappointment. Waste so those people days. that hated Kylo Ren from the beginning are probably gonna really hate yeah, this really decision. Like this. They're like, "Fuck!" There's nothing behind Kylo Ren. Uh, let's talk about one more thing before we end the spoilers discussion. Getting a little unfocused now. It is five in the morning at this point. But um, Luke, yes. Luke killing uh, uh, Kylo Ren, trying to kill Kylo Ren. So we got that story in three different cutscenes. Yeah, right? that was kind of nice so, how they did that. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, they talked about, uh, so Luke talked about it where he was painting himself. It was very ambiguous. He didn't really talk much about it. And then it was Kylo talking about it. And, and, you know, Luke, you know, he's a murderer and he notices he's too... Kylo's too powerful, he's darkness, so, you know, he just comes in with a mad face. It looks fucking badass, he wants to kill him, but Kylo brings the building down on him, slaughters his Jedi temple, and takes a few guys and leaves, right? But then, finally, when Rey fights with Luke, because they do a little bit of, of sword play, uh, but then she engages the lightsaber, he just falls over, he stops, and she's like, tell me the truth. So he tells her the truth, but it's a mixture of the two stories. Yeah. That, that, yeah, he was going to kill him because, you know, he could stop everything from happening. But then he hesitated and he said he was ashamed with himself. But that's right when, you know, Kylo was looking at him and then the confrontation happens. Um, you like that? I, I mean, I it could more. Oh, go ahead. It fit, it fit with the theme of the island because the whole theme of the island was about perspective where Luke's talking about the Jedis weren't good guys. They allowed... Ooh, that was another juicy bit. Well, they, they start talking about like... well, Maybe these Jedis are fucking idiots. I kind of liked that. Yeah, it's bit. like I, you, you think of me as a legend and I look at myself as a failure who created Kylo Ren. Mm -hmm. You see the Jedis as these people and they see who they really were and so it's a lot about perspective. And so it was kind of like a neat theme of the island to talk about like yeah. the importance of perspective. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a neat... Neat part of this. Yeah, story. I liked it. What did you, you wanted more of that? Yeah, I wanted to see more exactly. of what happened in the in the temple. Jedi temple. Yeah. Yeah, because because who are these knights of the Ram? And who he talked And what, what was happened? that fucking scene in the first Force Awakens where they're in the rain? Yeah, that's the that's one that's not connected to this film yeah. at all. Are they gonna connect that in the ninth film, or is there actual behind the scenes course corrections here? That we that 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 is almost indicative of WB in the DC universe, you know. It it feels like that sometimes, where they're like changing shit around and not delivering on these things. So the Knights of Ren are nowhere. I thought that the Knights of Ren were actually going to be those guys in red. Oh yeah. But there's no mention that they have any force powers whatsoever. No. It, there's no mention that they're Knights of Ren, and and Kylo doesn't show any sympathy towards no, them no, or talk to them at all. So those weren't the Knights of Ren. So where the fuck are the Knights of Ren? 
You know. got you set up all questions, this great questions. you set up all this great fucking lore in the first film, and every single great bit of extended lore you destroyed in this film. Cut it right now. Snoke. Snoke. <laughs> yes. <Point in. laughs> And Kylo, the Knights of Ren, and who her parents are, how did you get the fucking lightsaber, where is Luke's green lightsaber, we do see the green lightsaber, we actually do, in the flashback when he's gonna kill, yeah. Yeah, we he's see using it. green, but it's never mentioned again, he doesn't seem to have it anymore, where's his green fucking lightsaber, yeah, so... I'm a little angry now at five in the morning, maybe, <laughs> how maybe he has little... the astral project dice. Oh, yeah, that, so he also, so that's another thing. There's no real satisfying conclusion to Han. They don't, I was like, okay, maybe they're going to address this in the next film where they give a lot of leeway to Han. Uh, the, the one time they dropped the ball hard in Force Awakens, in my opinion, was when uh, Leia completely ignores Chewie or Chewie completely ignores Leia, and they just pass each other, and it's more Rey and, and you know, Leia embracing over Han's death, and I thought, okay, well, maybe they're related, or this will be revealed in her lineage. No, he's raised just some random person here, right? So, so that, so then that carries over here, where nobody really cares about Han, and then nobody talks about it. He's mentioned maybe twice through these dice. So apparently Han had the whole, you know, tacky dice in the thing, which I like. It's fine, yeah. um, and but. How, how does Luke use these dice? He he astral projects them to Leia in their like moment of need on the salt planet, like salt hoff, and like gives them gives them to her, kisses her on the forehead. None of them realize that he's an astral projection because he's kind of interacting with mm -hmm. them. And in some ways, they paid respect to Han in that scene where he's yeah. like, he clearly he's talking about Han without mentioning Han. Well, they mentioned him much much earlier. The second the when Chewbacca first gets to the island, yeah. and you first see him on there. You know, Luke says, "Well, where, where's Han? Like, what, yeah. what's going on?" It just. But I wanted a little more. Game, yeah, but okay. So so he gives us these dice. He gives her the dice, and then Luke dies, and the dice are still there. And Kylo somehow finds these dice. And then they disappear. After Luke had disappeared. Yes. So the dice had a little more power to stay around. And then I, the dice I disappear guess. in Kylo's hands. Symbolically, he is truly now alone. And he can't come to the light. He is truly the dark side. Th he's not a Sith. He's just dark force. And Rey is <laughs> light force because there must be balance. And so when Rey kills Kylo to be in episode nine, a new Kylo will just spawn because, you know, there's yeah, it, it'll, it it'll be in just some random kid. It's going to be that Because on the Hall of Force. That general? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, please, God. Don't general, <laughs> general Weasley. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. So that, I think we've pretty much covered every ridiculous yeah. aspect in Star, uh, Star Wars. In the spoilers discussion, it came more about talking about the negatives. But these kinds of things are, you know, when we do our review 15 minutes after watching the film, you have to have time to kind of chew on it. And when I had time to chew yeah, on it, a lot of the negatives came up. we don't have out. those questions answered, yep. we're just like... Questions are still unanswered. Questions that were answered were unsatisfying answered. That, that's the breakdown. Uh, but it was an entertaining watch, well-directed. Uh, you know, action scenes are great. Expands the Star Wars lore in new directions. Uh, so I'm still willing to see Episode Nine, And uh, I do think the Han Solo film is going to be a disaster uh, because I never really wanted a Han Solo film. Um, I'm more on board for a Ben Kenobi film. I'm, I'm on board for that. Uh, I hear the Boba Fett is still kind of kicking around. I, I'll, I'll watch that. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I'll watch them, but I don't want them. After this film, uh, a little bit of my excitement of a, of a new Star Wars film every fucking year for the next 20 years, a little shaken right now. Yes. Just a tiny bit shaken. Uh, it's, this one's still quality, and hopefully they can maintain quality, but you're, you're giving me a, a little bit of despair and worry. So, mm -hmm. all right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you completely disagree with us, whatever, downvote the video. Tell us in the comments why, though. That's why it's important. If you want to defend Star Wars against us, <laughs> that's fine, uh, because we love it just as much as you do, and this is our opinion. And, uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. <clears throat>